I was a big Simpsons fan. I go way back to the first time it aired. Yeah. I, was, I was in. On the Tracy Ullman show? No, I remember seeing it on the Tracy Ullman show, but it was not formed well enough or something to me back then. But as soon as it hit as its own series, I was I was all in. Yeah. How did that uh, for how did that all come about for you? Um, I so I didn't have a voiceover agent. I just had a theatrical agent, and I never wanted to do voiceover when I was planning my world domination sort of coup, and. Um, because I think because I had always been teased for having such a funny voice when I was a kid, and I just didn't think that I could parlay that sound into something really, really great. I was just going to have to work with it. It but I wasn't like a gonna deficit. Put it. Yeah, it did, very much so. I didn't really want to shine a light on it that much. But anyway, I had been working a lot in television. I'd actually done a, quite a few movies by the time I was I auditioned in 86, so I would have been uh, 22. And uh, I, my agent said, Yardley, go in and read for this cartoon. They're going to do these little bumpers on this sketch comedy show called The Tracy Ullman Show. And I was like, the what now? I said, what? What? So <laughs> I never said no to an audition, even though I didn't really want to do it. I just wasn't interested in doing a cartoon. It wasn't sort of a hard pass. I just thought, eh, who cares? So I went in and they showed me a picture of Bart. And I read for Bart, which which is sort of now has become this huge urban lore. It, there's much too much emphasis put on it. I read for Bart because they always have women do the voices of young boys because our voices don't change. Right. But it wasn't like Yardley Smith should do the voice of Bart. In fact, the woman who was casting The Simpsons at that time had seen me in a little play in Hollywood about a year before. Mm -hmm. And when they were casting The Simpsons on the Tracy Ullman show said, I know who should play Lisa Simpson. So, so that's what I was called in. She, did she talk to your agent? Or? Yeah. Oh, okay. So you went in, uh, you did Lisa, you got the part, but these were shorts yes. on the Tracy Ullman show, so it probably didn't feel like much at it, the beginning. It didn't, and in fact, actually, I read for Bonnie Pietilo, who was our casting director, and then I had to go back and read for Matt Graining. And I remember reading for Matt, and he didn't laugh, and I thought, well, I guess I didn't get that job. So I just kind of let it roll off my back, um, which is, wasn't usually what happened with auditions when I didn't get it. I, was, I took things very hard, very personally, um, for a long time. So when I got the job again, I said, oh, that's fabulous. The, the job is what? We're doing what? And they're like, well, you're going to tell a whole story in about a minute, and it's going to be four 20-second segments. It was like a minute and 20 seconds, right? And we would go in at the end of a Tracy Ullman rehearsal day, and Dan Castellaneta, who was on the Tracy Ullman show, and Julie Kavner, who was also on the Tracy Ullman mm -hmm. show, had been tapped to play Homer and Marge, respectively. And they built a makeshift sound booth in the back of the audience bleachers, which wasn't really soundproof at all. And so we would go in at the end of their day and record The Simpsons. And, but invariably, Tracy would be having a, a music rehearsal. Mm -hmm. And so our not soundproof sound booth was just bullshit. We had to stop and wait for it to be done. And it was, it was all sort of spit and paste until we went to half hour. And that was devastating to me because it, it injured my career. You know, every casting director didn't know exactly what happened. They, they didn't say, oh, Rodriguez, uh, you know, his acting must have been so bad that they cut him out. It, it, it had nothing to do with that, you know. It, 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 apparently, Will told uh, uh, Michael Mann that, that we're going to cut him out of history. I said, you're not cutting him out of history. You're cutting me out.